Hi, I'm Sam. I'm an artist and I help other artists grow in skills and confidence in my online membership and also teach other artists how to make serious money doing something that they love every day. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the three best tips, my three best tips for finding your art style, which I get questions about a lot. Finding your art style, how do you stand out? What does it mean to you? All of these things I'm going to be answering in this video, so I really hope you enjoy it. So my first tip for finding your own art style is inspiration. That's number one. So go to art galleries, not just looking online at social media or looking on the internet, because sometimes I don't know about you, but if you have Google up on your screen, you don't always know what to type in. You could type in, you know, art, but that's going to be so vague that it's going to be like a minefield trying to work your way through all of these different styles and materials and subject matters and compositions. It's going to be too overwhelming. So with social media, it's pretty good because the more that you click on, the more it will show you. That's how the algorithm works, which is really helpful. But I think there's nothing like seeing it in person, actually going there and standing sometimes a little bit too close to a piece that you just find beautiful for whatever reason that is. Going to an art gallery, being in that energy, in that atmosphere, knowing that these people have put their heart and soul into these pieces that are adorning the walls is just unlike anything else. You can't get that from looking at your phone, you know, scrolling through mindlessly on Instagram or Facebook. There is nothing like actually saying today I'm going to take some time out and I'm going to go to an art gallery and I'm going to really have a look at some of the pieces. I'm going to look at it objectively. Which pieces do what do really stand out to me? Is it the colours? Is it the materials? Is it the composition? You know a lot of things go into these pieces that you don't even notice. One really great channel on YouTube it's called Great Art Explained and I think there was a series on it, but they've kind of chopped it down into bite-sized chunks, which is really interesting. It goes into the in-depth reasons why these artists created these pieces, the subject behind them, the, the story behind them, and also just the technical parts too. It's fascinating. Gone off on a bit of a tangent there. But taking some time out to really look at this work in person, there's nothing like it. And I would really encourage you to do that. Find inspiration find pieces that you really love. And then when you love a piece, what do you love about it? Is it the colours? Is it the materials? Is it the light? You know, a lot of the time I'm drawn to pieces that have interesting light. And so I want to apply that more to my work. Make a note of it. What are the things that you want to apply to your own work? Another great way of looking at art is actually books, you know, taking your time to go through libraries, having something in your hand that you can flick through and really show you in depth some of the light, lots of stories behind it as well. I remember going into a secondhand bookstore recently and just looked at the art section and it was amazing. You know, obviously you're limited to what they have in stock, but I came away with some, first of all, real bargains, you know, a couple of quid for a really old book. And some of these works you could just look at for hours. It's so inspiring and so beautiful. And it might introduce you to artists that you've never heard of before. So really be open to that. So that's the first thing, inspiration. The second tip about finding your art style is to ask yourself some, some really poignant questions that take some headspace and some time, some think, real thinking time to work out what they are. And the first question is, what are you really passionate about? So what is it that really fires you up? What makes you feel excited? What lights that fire in your belly? What are you passionate about in life? And it might take a little while. I think on the surface, sometimes people say, oh, you know, well, I quite like this or I quite like that. But once you open the gates to passion, I think it, they, it will start to flow and it won't be a problem. It's just getting started. Really take some time out where you're not going to be disturbed and really think about what your passions are. The next one is linked. So what are your hobbies? What do you love doing the most? And you might have quite a few. If you're a creative type, you're probably multifaceted. So your, in, your creativity comes out in lots of different ways. For example, with me, I love artwork. I love drawing and painting, but I also love gardening. I like cooking. I like history. I like uh, animals and horses and nature and wildlife. And, the, you know, once you start, like I said, the ball starts rolling. There are so many th different things that you can probably come up with. So write them all down. What are your hobbies? What do you love doing in your spare time, in your quiet time? 
is it a form of exercise is it going and visiting places is it art galleries there's it's just endless so write down what your hobbies are right now and the next question i would like you to ask yourself is was there a piece that you created recently a piece of work or something that you did that you just found so enjoyable so easy to do that it just kind of flowed out of you was there a piece that stands out in your mind that you just found so easy and so enjoyable to do and what was it really think about what that was and what you loved about it what was it that made it easy do you still love that piece now have a little think about that so that's the subject of passions really finding out what your passions are is important to be truthful and honest with yourself and work out what they are and my final tip about finding your art style is all about skills so what is your current skill set be honest with yourself a lot of the time i don't know about you i think i've become less naive as time has gone on because at the beginning when you see somebody creating something you think i know i'm going to have a go at that and you do it and it doesn't turn out the way that you hope it will the picture that you have in your mind you realize that there's a little bit of a gap between what you want to achieve and what you want to accomplish and your personal skill set now, skills are something that need to be practiced and learned. So if you're really honest and realistic about where your skill set is right now, then you've got a really clear path going forward to what you need to do to improve certain skill sets. So that leads me into my next question. What do you need to work on to improve your current skill set? What do you need to practice? And the only way that you're going to get better, you can look at the theory all you like, is to actually do it and put hand to pencil or paintbrush and give it a go so what is it that you want to work on is it that you want to blend better do you want a softer look do you want more detail um funny thing about detail i found over the years is that the more detail i try to put in because that's what i thought it needed the messier and the less i liked it in the end now what i do is i put color block and then I only add uh, details in the final layers. And what happens is your brain fills in the difference. So if you look at a dog, for example, or an animal that you've got close, if you look at the fur, you'll see that your brain doesn't pick up on every single individual hair. You'll find that it clumps together. You'll find that some light reflects off it. Some of it just looks like a, a mass, actually quite a smooth surface of fur. And so we need to do the same with our artwork. Our brain will fill in the difference. In this case, less is definitely more. So less detail, I found that I've, I've really liked the work after. And I haven't been too caught up in the, the tiny details all the way through. I've just added them in at the end. It's been so much more enjoyable and actually the piece is much better. So that's just a bit of a tangent. I've gone off again, um, but a little snippet of information I've worked out about details. So is it that the details just look a bit messy, in which case you might be putting too many in and overthinking a lot of it and we can block ourselves in that way? Is it that the composition is a little bit strange? Is it that you need to think about the ratio, you know, the third, 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 that seems to be something that's aesthetically pleasing. There is usually a little bit of a strategy when it comes to what looks good. Um, and what doesn't. Of course, styles and uh, tastes will go in and out, but a lot of the time, just something that's a little bit pleasing, something that draws you in to the piece, to the picture that you're looking at. You know, have you got a clear way in or is there something blocking the, the viewer? And that's really important as well. Can you incorporate negative space? So have, if you're, if you're doing an animal, and I used to do this a lot, you put it to one side. And so again, it's like drawing the viewer into the piece. So have a little think about what it is that you want to work on, that you need to practice, that you can possibly gain advice on. Can you find a, a tutor? Can you find a support person? Can you look on YouTube and Instagram? Can you really try and work out what it is that you need to work on and then you need to practice? And don't forget that not every piece that you create is going to be a masterpiece. You're going to make bad art in order to make good art. You have to experiment and you have to allow yourself to fail a little bit in order to move forward don't be too hard on yourself don't expect miracles overnight these things take time they take practice 
and they take being realistic and objective about your work and then working out where the gap is in order for you to move forward. So those are my three best tips on how to find your own art style inspiration, passion and art skills. I really hope you found this video helpful. If you have anything else to add to this, anything that you do specifically, I would really love to know in the comments. If you did enjoy this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe so that you will see more of the same. And I really look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.